Welcome to the Salon Vanguard channel. Today we are talking about the things that I find the best about Cardfight Vanguard. Now, why this video? Lately, I've seen quite some people being very cynical and negative. And sure, sometimes Bushiroad, like any other company, will make some mistakes and people call them out for that. But it's really easy to get negative and more negative and more negative and it just starts piling on. And it's pretty toxic, let's say. So I figured, why not just talk about the good things for once? I know it's not popular. Oh, this video won't be very popular, you know. Oh, if there's not some drama, why would I watch this video? It's not even exciting. Well, I'm sorry. I just find this pretty important. Like yesterday I was at Locals. I had fun when I play on CFA. I have fun. The game is good. I don't have as much fun with other games, so why aren't we talking about this? Now, first of all, we had this giveaway for Zero Damage Gaming. The winner for that is Yu Heng from Singapore. So congratulations, I've emailed you. You'll be able to choose a playmat from the Zero Damage Gaming store. Apart from that, we're also doing another giveaway, of course, because at the end of this month, I am releasing a new song, Melody of Death, and I want to promote that. So to promote that, we're doing a new Zero Damage Gaming giveaway. Winner will once again be able to choose any playmat from the store link for the giveaway will be down below be sure to enter now back to the actual video first of all me calling the positives will obviously also require some examples from other games where i don't think they're doing it quite as well that does not mean these games are bad i have played basically all of them extensively so it's not me shitting on them i still play Yu-Gi-Oh, for example nothing against it but so we will need some examples here and there. And so no, this is not shitting on those games. So first of all, a really good reason why I really like Cardfight Vanguard is the lack of a mana system. Now, if you don't know what a mana system is, if you've never used, played something like Magic the Gathering or maybe a Hearthstone, does Shadowverse have it or Legends of Runeterra? I actually haven't played either of those, but let me know if they do. Essentially what a mana system is, a lot of your cards are tied behind costs. And as the game progresses, you are able to pay higher costs. So in Magic, this is the form of having land. You play your land, you tap those, and so you can't play an eight mana card on turn one, generally. <laughs> now, the great thing about a mana system is that it will always force your game to have a certain pace. You can't just poop out your hand on turn one and go off because you simply don't have the resources. Unless, of course, the company just decides, fuck it. Let's give you free mana forever with all these random overpowered cards and so forth. And we've seen that in Magic in certain points of history. But, you know, that aside, in general, it keeps the pace of the game slower. It doesn't make games end on turn one, as we can see in some of these vintage formats like Magic. But what it also does is making your game more prone to bricking. Because if you are forced to put a form of mana into your deck, like in Magic with lands, you already have pieces that do fundamentally almost nothing and need to coincide in your draws with pieces that are low mana enough. So getting mana screwed, like not having enough lands or drawing all these cards that have way too high costs and you don't have the mana for it and so forth, you have way more ways to brick in Magic the Gathering. Now, someone could say, hey, but if you build your deck right, it doesn't happen quite as much. And that's true. But in general, it is just one more way to not be able to play the game. And so I find even with perfectly built decks, it is much easier to get screwed, just unable to play the game whatsoever in a game that has a mana system like Hearthstone. Like I like Hearthstone. I've, I've been legend. Wow. No, it's not a big deal, but there is just w more ways to get screwed. It is one more layer of RNG. The best player in the world can get absolutely fucked by just getting mana screwed and that's it. Game over. Now, you could argue Vanguard has its kind of own way of having a mana system in riding up. However, due to G assist and mulligans and the fact that you have drive checks, so you have a natural creation of having more draws, we'll get to that, that's actually number two. It actually doesn't screw you quite as often. I find that in a game like Vanguard, you just don't brick quite as much as in some of these other games like Hearthstone, like Magic. Like people can cry about RNG and Vanguard because of triggers all they want. You lose to bricking in Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic far more often than, than a game like Vanguard. And so that's just 
a different form of RNG that's just not quite as obvious. Now number two, and that's closely tied together with number one for me, deck velocity. So what is deck velocity? It basically means how fast do you go through the cards in your deck? This has an effect on RNG. Imagine if you were to play a card game with a 60 card deck and you only draw the top five and that is what you play with. The randomness of your game would go up by a lot because Again, it's those five, you got unlucky with the five, that's it. Now imagine you play a card game with a 40 card deck and you see all of them on turn one. The RNG would go to zero because you see all the cards. And so, because of that reason, seeing more cards more easily generally means RNG goes down. You don't brick quite as often anymore, you're not reliant on the luck of the draw quite as often anymore. And so, a game with a higher deck velocity generally doesn't get screwed by luck quite as often. This is where drive checks come in. Vanguard has a natural way to decrease RNG through drive checks. Now this will make some people mad to go like, what? Drive checks are just extra RNG because you can check a crit and that's blah, 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 blah. Yes, it adds a level of RNG, but it also adds a level of not RNG because it increases deck velocity. You see far more cards in your average Vanguard game than in your average whatever other card game, Yu-Gi-Oh, for example. Your deck velocity is so fast and so just opening unplayable barely ever happens in Vanguard because you draw, you get a mulligan, and then as long as you have a grade one right, you get another draw. You don't rely on other cards to see more cards. And that is a thing we see in all these other card games. Something like a Pokemon, you have high deck velocity. Absolutely, like Pokemon has these other card games beat when it comes to that. They play some cards and go through their entire deck and refill their hands and just keep going with all of these supporters. But they rely on those supporters to get that deck velocity in the first place. So they can still have some really back-breaking bricks, but at least once they don't brick, their deck velocity is very high. However, in a game like Magic, you do your mulligan, but you're all already minus one and you can do it again and you're once again minus one. That's it. From there, either you have some really good draw magic or that's the end of it. You get your draw for a turn and that's it. Yu-Gi-Oh, once again, either you open playable or you don't. Especially because these games tend to last two turns, so it's not like your draw phase is doing that much either. While one may say, oh, once again, Vanguard has these triggers, yes, but it also has deck velocity, way more so than something like Yu-Gi-Oh. You get these drive checks and so you can really easily get out of a rut, let's say. Whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh, let's say you go second, you don't open hand traps, you're probably already gonna have a really, 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 really bad time. However, if you go first, and you don't open a starter, once again, you're gonna have a really, really, really bad time. So that's really where that deck velocity really comes into play. So yes, drive checks add that RNG, but they also decrease RNG, even though a lot of people don't really think about that. Number three, decks do their own thing, even at the highest level. Now, I may often make the joke that Sharot and Perfect Razor and Mordred and Big Belly now and all of these cards all do the same thing being swing, re-stand to rear guards and that is true <laughs> to a certain extent. V lately has really had that issue but in general when you play a Dark Irregular deck, when you play a Grand Blue deck, when you play a Neo Nectar deck, all of these decks do fundamentally extremely different things. At the top level in this card game when you look at a Luard or a Gridora or a Nitros, you are playing completely different decks and they feel different, they look different, you're just playing an entirely different game. These decks have really, really solid flavor to them. Now, when I go to another game, let's say Yu-Gi-Oh! And once again, I have my pet decks in that, that's great. But when I, in Yu-Gi-Oh! try to play my tier 2 deck, my lower tier deck. I am essentially playing the same deck as a tier 1 deck, just doing everything the tier 1 deck does but worse. All these decks try to make the board that the Dragon Link deck tries to make, but worse. Instead of dying to 3 hand traps, they die to 1. Instead of having 3.5 negates, <laughs> you get maybe 1.5. But in the end, it's all the same shit. When I play Lightstorm, I just play shit Dragon Links. When I play Zombies, I just play shit Dragon Links, except for Balor Drog, I guess. In the end, once you get really down to it, there is really no point in playing quite some of these tier 2 decks, because they just do the same thing as Dragon Link, or whatever flavor of the Montek that's powerful right now, but worse. 
they'll almost always use some generic good card like a Halka Fibrax or before it was a Summon Sorceress and so forth. Try and make the same board, but just do it worse, do it weaker. As much as I can have fun in the game, the flavor just really isn't there. You really have to play an entirely different deck before you start feeling like you're playing a different deck. Like sure, once I play, I don't know, True Draco, I'll surely feel like I'm playing something different than Lightstorm. But as long as I'm playing some kind of deck that wants to make a board on turn one through comboing, I'm gonna play just the same deck with different art but worse. In Vanguard, that is not the case at all. Now, in Magic, it kinda isn't either. Now, you could argue some of these colors in Standard lately have been so strong that you're just forced into them. <laughs> and like, Magic has had more bannings in the last two years than in the last 20 before that, crazy shit. But so sure, there you could argue a lot of these decks are the same. Like last year, I think everyone was forced to play green. Was it o Oko that turned everything into bears? Whatever, everyone was forced to play green because of certain crazy shit. Like that game has been on fire lately, not in a good way. But in general, you know, decks are pretty different. Just not the case for Yu-Gi-Oh, but it is the case for Vanguard. And I enjoy that quite a bit, you know. If I'm a grand blue player, I know, wow, I'll really be playing a graveyard recursion deck. It will always have its flavor. Whereas when I'm playing my fucking Lightstone or Zombies, again, I might as well trash it and just play Rockets. Make the same board, but just don't die to one ash. Now, final point, of course, Vanguard is just Vanguard. <laughs> it has its own team. And if you like those teams, if you like the flavor, if you like all that lore, obviously it's gonna be your game. And that's the case for me but that is not very objective. You know, I can't just say, oh, I sure love my Megiddo art, so therefore it's better than Yu-Gi-Oh. Doesn't quite work that way, but you know, that is a personal thing. Maybe you personally love the aesthetics of MTG and that makes you won over by it over Vanguard and that's all fine. I just felt like we could use a little positivity. That was all, like, subscribe, be sure to enter the new giveaway to promote my beautiful new song, Melody of Death. I'm very, very excited for it. I hope to share some more of it in the future. But yeah, I will see you soon. Ciao.